Welcome to the car guys and welcome to a global car apocalypse. The used car market and prices are at rock bottom. New cars are struggling to find any owners at all, regardless of how special they are. So I thought it was a time to evaluate the cars that I've got on order and evaluate the market in general for some of those key supercar brands and really answer that question, is now the absolute worst time to buy a new supercar? It really is a funny old world at the moment. The worldwide appetite for supercars and for buying luxury goods is at an all-time low. No one is thinking about it. No one is planning it. And actually, there is a school of thought that says that perhaps things are going to change fundamentally. It really is a scary place to be right now. Buying supercars, buying hypercars, endlessly buying supercars does feel a bit unnecessary. Are people going to want to buy crazy bonkers, really super expensive, super fast cars in the future or is now a time to reflect and perhaps not do as much of that nonsense and focus our resources and focus our time and our effort and our money on things a bit less frivolous. It has taken a global pandemic to bring everyone to their senses, but certainly a lot of the crazy used prices for old Porsche and some of those limited edition Ferraris have started to come off and the whole market is in a deep depression. Today I'm in the Mercedes S600 Maybach. I agree, perhaps not the most appropriate vehicle to be talking about such issues given that it is a symbol of wealth and success and capitalism. Values of supercars at the moment are plummeting pretty much across the board. There's not really a manufacturer that has escaped it so far. Remember, we're coming off a time where a McLaren 720S has just sold on the Collecting Cars auction website for £130,000. Yes, that's right, £130,000. And that's the lowest price that any used 720 has so far recorded highlighting if it needed to be highlighted that McLaren are in serious trouble when it comes to second-hand values. Quick wristwatch check, I am wearing the Grand Seiko 9F Anniversary, so this is one of the Quartz Special Editions designed to celebrate the anniversary of the 9F Quartz movement. It fits perfectly, it's got a beautiful silver dial with 9F embossed in it, it's a day date, so it's got a Japanese symbols for the days, which I think is just super cool, and I love it. Check it out. If you've got supercars on order, and bear in mind, I do, so I'm playing both poacher and gamekeeper at the moment because I've got the potential to buy used supercars at now rock bottom prices, but also I've got new supercars on the way, and I've got current supercars that I maybe paid a bit too much for in the garage which are depreciating. So I've got it from all angles and that's what makes it particularly scary. Yes there are bargains to be had but then there are also big holes of depreciation to swallow and we've got the impending doom perhaps of new cars arriving into an uncertain future. So let's talk about some of those big supercar brands and what's happening with them at the moment. First up Ferrari. Now Ferrari as you know is a brand that I love passionately. I have many examples of their cars and I have owned many in the past. I've got a 488 Pista Spider on the way that I am incredibly excited about and I cannot wait but it has of course been delayed by the global pandemic. The factory shut, I have no idea when it's going to come. So there'll be an update on that at some point in the future but as of right now I have no idea when that car is coming. Likewise, I also have an 812 Superfast on order, which in terms of the spec, I'm very excited about. However, I am now becoming acutely aware that I seem to be getting the last 812 Superfast hardtop that Ferrari are making, because every single person that I know has already got theirs. And of course, that one has also been affected by the factory shutdowns. And added to that, now of course, values of 812 Superfasts used ones 
are plummeting as well, by large amounts. An 812 Superfast has just gone on collecting cars for a little over £200,000. I mean, that's crazy. This is a car that only a couple of years ago was bought new for £350,000, and it's just gone for just over two hundred. I mean, that is scary. Tell me that something like that is not going to affect my purchasing decisions or mood in the future, because it absolutely is. I bitched and moaned last year about losing quite a lot of money on my 488 GTB, and the 812 Superfast will make that look like chicken feed. It's not going to be a super long keeper, that car, and it never was going to be. So I'm really considering dumping that order for that car. I can't remember whether I've told you this, but I have already stopped my F8 Tributo, which I was going to get. I've already dumped that, didn't see the point of that. And as you well know, if you're a long-term viewer of the channel, you'll also know that I was never really interested in the SF90 or the newly hotly spied SF90 Spider, which of course was the worst kept secret in the world. I've not actually seen a Roma in person. I wasn't invited to the launch and so I don't know what that's like at all, but I am guessing that it's probably not going to be my cup of tea. So we do have an issue here with Ferrari because although I absolutely still love the company and the brand and the cars, for the first time I'm not as excited about some of the new ones as I have been in the past. And I'm sort of at the point where I kind of would be quite happy to just take my 488 Pista and that pretty much be it. And the dangerous thing for Ferrari is that I am not alone in that view. I've got quite a few friends who are going to be buying SF90s and pretty much to the man they have now all said they're cancelling their orders. And that must be pretty scary for Ferrari because we're talking about a car which is half a million quid each. But if you think Ferrari's in trouble, then consider please the prospects of McLaren. Now there have been some very interesting dissections and videos on McLaren's potential future, not least uh, from friend of the channel James, uh, JM, please check out his channel now, I'll put the link somewhere. But this is a company that is at the moment plagued with a second-hand values problem, real-life quality control issues, and also a lack of specialness problem when it comes to attracting potential customers to the brand. Remember, I am a McLaren owner, I've got a 675 LT, and unlike Ferrari, in no way has McLaren made me feel special or excited about the new 765 LT. So where I'm sat at the moment is that there is not a chance in hell right now of me buying a 765 LT. And since I am bang on the perfect customer for that car, that's got to be a problem. That should really worry people at Woking. Well, I did want a 600 LT, but frankly their treatment in looking to buy one was so shoddy that I will never buy that car. Likewise, the LT Spider. 600 LTs are stacked up in dealerships at the moment. They cannot get rid of them, and the discounts are incredible. Porsche are sitting quite well at the moment. They've got a new model, the 992. They've just announced and launched the Turbo S, which looks like a stunning car. It's probably not overall for me, but it is a stunning car, and there's no doubt about it. And obviously, Porsche is following that up with a, as we now know, naturally aspirated GT range for the 992. So there's a lot to be excited about with Porsche. However, I don't think it's just me that is starting to get a bit too cynical about this GT car merry-go-round which is going on with every successive generation. The fact that you've got to put your name down or have an expression of interest, the fact that you may have to buy cars that you don't want, the fact that you've got to hope that you're going to get one you don't actually know it, the fact that in the UK at least we don't really get paint to sample on anything so you can't really make the car truly special to you. All these things are starting to annoy me and are therefore meaning that I would be less likely to buy one of those cars and I don't think I'm alone. Will I be excited when they're announced? Of course I will. I mean, no doubt about it. Will I probably lust after them when they are announced? Yes, probably. So feel free to discount all of what I've just said. Now, Lamborghini. Lamborghini, again, in a very, very tricky position. They've got an Aventador, which will probably be replaced in about 
2024. It's a naturally aspirated V12. It's a glorious Lamborghini, but the next one will almost certainly be hybrid powered and that's going to rob Lamborghini of the main reason for buying a Lamborghini. And that's a worry. I love the SVJ, I love the look of it, but I've never been tempted truly to press the button and own one. And to think that this replacement is going to have a hybrid powertrain, that really does turn me right off, just like with the SF90. And I'm not really in the market for any of those crazy, crazy special editions they do, like the Cyan. There might only be 63 of them, and it might look like an incredible spaceship sci-fi design, but not for one second have I wanted one of those. But the interesting thing is, is that Lamborghini has just announced a new car, the Huracan Evo rear-wheel drive Spider. So that's the latest variant of the Huracan Evo, which in itself is a variant of the Huracan. It's just been announced. The factory has just opened and they've immediately announced this new car, which, if I'm being honest, is a bit disappointing because I think everyone was expecting something a bit more special. Certainly the word on the street was that it was going to be a Trofeo Performante type version of the Hurricane Evo, and it's not. It's just the Spider version of it. Is that car going to change the world? No. Is it going to look particularly out of place in this current climate? I think yes. Is now the worst time to be buying a brand new supercar? Do you know what? I think it is the worst time. I think there's never been a worse time for having a new supercar than right now. Whether that's public opinion directed towards you, whether that's the amount of money you're going to lose, whether that's just how wrong it feels in this time of increasing care for more important things. I am a supercar owner and lover and for me to be sitting here going, hmm, do I really want another one? Can I really be bothered to go through that same old merry-go-round? For me to be thinking that and for many of my friends to be thinking that is definitely an indicator that things are going to change. Demand has been decimated and I think that coupled with a general feeling that we want to maybe tighten our belts or not spend money frivolously or not perhaps waste loads of money on pointless trinkets is I think definitely going to cause major issues for a lot of these car companies. Is it the worst time to be buying a used supercar? Absolutely not because of course with the decimation of demand means prices are dropping and you can pick up some truly incredible cars for buttons money. I'm spending more time looking at Auto Trader and some of our favourite dealerships and collecting cars than I am looking at manufacturers' websites and specking up new cars. Whether it's the fact that Jason and I are having so much fun in old school analogue cars that cost a tiny fraction of supercar money, I think all these things are having an effect. But I'm just not in a place now where I'm going to be spending a fortune on supercar after supercar after supercar. Yes, there's the F40 replacement, which due to all of this issue going on, my announcement of that has been delayed. But I think that will probably be the last big new supercar purchase that I make. And that makes me a bit sad because all of my life I've been looking forward to incredible new cars coming and with the prospect of maybe owning them and I'm just not feeling that at the moment. Obviously I'm spending a lot more time in the watch world so if you haven't already checked out the watch guys TV. Please do so now and you'll see what uh, what I'm doing there. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Let me know how you're thinking. Have you got cars on order? Have you cancelled cars? Are you now getting out of these orders that you've got, finding some way to ditch it? Have you just bought a new supercar and lost a fortune on it and now it's left a bad taste in your mouth? Let us know in the comments. It's certainly given me a lot to think about and I've really got some big decisions to make. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this episode on the values and prospects of new supercars interesting. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. We love to grow the channel. We've obviously just hit 50,000 and we'd like to drive forward to 100. Also, please follow our Instagram page and Facebook. Visit our website at thecarguys.tv and by all means, while you're there, maybe buy some merchandise. We've got t-shirts and hoodies available in all sizes and colours and we hope that you enjoy them. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week.